So one of the games I like to play to make gardening a bit more of a challenge and a bit more interesting for me is to really challenge the concept of the hungry gap in the UK. And what we try and do really is try and get as abundant a harvest in the hungry gap as we would in July and even into August. Now the mix of veg will be very different. Uh, it'll be lots of calabrese and cauliflowers and purple sprouting broccoli and cabbages and lettuces and spinaches and turnips and radish and strawberries and things like that but it's still a pretty good diet and when you combine that with all the preserves and the potatoes new potatoes and everything like that it's pretty great so um, what i wanted to do today was just show you how that looks and what i'm doing right now to prepare from the perspective of mainly the flowering brassicas so let's take a look so i'm surrounded by brassicas at the moment and what i'm doing with these is i'm just potting them on and these are my sowing from the 9th of September and so I've got Calabrese it's looking really nice I've got kind of spring cabbages there's April and Duncan again looking quite good I've got some little cauliflowers which are not looking great but they're okay, managed to get four of those. And I've got my next succession here of Calabrese, Marathon, and some more Snowball uh, cauliflowers. And these are done on the 22nd of September. So about 11 days later. And then this is my last succession here of Calabrese, so they were done on the 2nd of October. So I've got three successions which should come ready for harvest sort of late April, early May, late May. And it's the same with the cauliflowers and similar sort of times for the spring cabbages. And I really like doing them this way and I'll just explain that a little bit by showing you where they're going to get planted. So this is where the plants are going to live now on this little bench up here, uh, shelf rather, until February time. And as a, they might get potted on again. We'll see how they go. Certainly I think these calories will get potted on again maybe those cabbages, probably not those cauliflowers, and definitely those, uh, so they're calabrese, uh, cauliflowers, and calabrese again. And then what happens is that in this lettuce bed, that runs all the way along here, not the whole bed, but some of it, will get planted to calabrese. And then, I forgive the mess, this turnip bed will have been harvested and so in there will go cauliflowers, three of them. And then in this spinach and onion bed there will go the next succession of cauliflowers. So there'll be six cauliflowers in here and probably something like 12 calories. And this little low tunnel here that's got the autumn lettuces in it that will be progressively harvested as well and interplanted into there will go more cauliflowers and calabrese and then in this bed which is currently carrots for autumn and early winter again in february time into this bed well, something will go uh, probably brussels sprouts for leaves and calabrese and this is actually a coal frame so it'll have a coal frame top on it and it'll look like that and as the plants grow the little be progressively lifted higher and higher and higher and then eventually taken off in sort of April time probably so then in May all this purple sprouting broccoli here will be ready sprouts will be coming to an end these collects will be given their last flush of growth although it'll probably be the ones at home that are doing that 
all this purple sprouting broccoli will be ready. We'll still have loads of carrots. This kale will be in its last flush of growth. We'll have our first strawberries. It'll be great. Although actually, it'll be these strawberries. It'll be the first because they'll be up in the roof in the polyton. Now, as it happens in my ebook, I do have a chapter on growing flowering brassicas all year round, and particularly for the hungry gap. If you scroll down in the book to the year round growing guides, and then scroll down again until you get to either growing brassicas for the hungry gap or growing leafy and flowering brassicas all year round. I think the best one relevant to this particular video is growing brassicas for the hungry gap. And I go through all the main types, so perennial kales, uh, purple sprouting broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, spring cabbages, calabrese, and kales and cauliflowers. And I step you through basically what to do in each month of the year. So it's a pretty useful little guide. I use it myself quite a few times. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon. And actually what I'll do is I'll just pop up a few photos from last year's Hungry Gap and you'll see what I mean.